a very warm good evening to one and all i say warm because it's raining heavily here in hubli and uh, i hope everyone is having a very pleasant evening i uh, welcome you all back to this last session of the international webinar on rewriting her story are uh, the chronicles of women in context of the south, uh, indian subcontinent it has been a wonderful wonderful day a seven day journey with all our uh, uh, participants just one second saya supata so uh, it has been a wonderful uh, journey of seven days with all our uh, participants and all our resource persons and today we have with us uh, dr hemant dave sir from uh, uh, <coughs> from vallabh vidyanagar and uh, it is uh, yet another interesting session uh, i welcome you all i first of all welcome dr hemant dave sir to the session and uh, uh, all our participants our honorary president shinandan shastri sir and let's begin this uh, melodious evening uh, with a melodious invocation uh, by the jagirdar sisters i request uh, miss duty uh, to please uh, Yes. Uh, thank you, Manali. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, um, my sister is in Madurai, so so she'll be connecting from there only. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm connecting from. from here bare mon kya tani te tere mere niwasi sire bare mon kya tani te मारे मारे अम्मा मारे मारे अम्मा मारे 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 को शुभ कोरो beautiful beginning for this evening uh, i now so request 
Ms. Nidhi Kati, the Vice President of the History Enthusiasts, uh, to kindly welcome the August gathering, the uh, virtual gathering, and also uh, briefly submit, give a report of the entire okay. webinar. Uh, thank you, Manali. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, firstly, uh, I welcome our today's valedictory speaker, uh, Dr. Hemant Dhavesa, Assistant Professor, PG Department of History, Sardar Patel University, uh, Vallabha Vidyanagar. I warmly welcome you, sir, uh, on behalf of thank our you, team and our honorary president and president. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation, sir. Thank you so much. And I also okay, welcome... Okay. I also welcome our honorary president, Sri Nandan Shastri ji, and president, Ms. Manali Momaya, to the session. Uh, I also take this opportunity to welcome uh, today's our chief editor, uh, our proceedings chief editor, uh, Dr. Shiladhar Mughli sir, and uh, Dr. Chidanand Dhavleshwar sir, and Dr. Ramesh Kamble sir. Uh, with their guidance, we were able to. Uh, prepare this proceeding and bring it in the uh, formatted form uh, today. So thank you so much, sir, uh, for guiding us continuously throughout this webinar. I also welcome all the participants who continuously supported us, participated in the webinar actively, and uh, today also very enthusiastically, they all are uh, you know, uh, they all have joined sharp at 7.30. So I thank all the participants for continuously supporting us and invite the, uh, them, uh, welcome them to this uh, valedictory session. Uh, so now I take this opportunity to uh, read report of uh, the seven days international webinar on rewriting her story. Uh, the History Enthusiasts organized a seven-day international webinar on the uh, theme Rewriting Her Story, The Chronicles of Women in the Context of Indian Subcontinent from 13th May 2023 to 19th May 2023. Uh, the webinar had uh, seven sub-themes such as women as depicted in scriptural texts and architecture, women and religion, women, museums and heritage, women in contemporary literature and media, women and health, women and social institutions, women and sexuality. Uh, under these uh, uh, seven sub-themes, we have received around 61 abstracts uh, from uh, uh, not only from uh, multiple states of India, but uh, outside India too. Uh, from Pakistan, Singapore, uh, we have received a lot of abstracts and of course, from all the states of India, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab, Bihar, uh, of course from Karnataka uh, and multiple papers are from uh, Bengal, particularly from Kolkata uh, and uh, all the papers, all the abstracts contain uh, productive information with uh, newer perspectives. A uh, total of 84 participants registered for this webinar and uh, we had uh, daily of three technical sessions and uh, we also had uh, each day one paper presentation session but particularly for contemporary literature we uh, got a lot of papers on the theme so we divided the English papers into one paper presentation session and the Kannad papers into the second. Uh, so on 13th, 5, 2023, uh, uh, we had uh, particularly uh, three technical sessions uh, uh, and we had Uma Chakravarti, ma'am, one of the feminist historians, uh, very famous and known for her work. She had joined us. Uh, Rekha Pandey, ma'am, was part of this session. Uh, Dr. Shaila Jahiremat, Dr. Uh, uh, Viraktamat sir from Hampi University uh, and uh, uh, many such scholars had joined us through the uh, sessions and uh, we are glad that uh, we got to uh, 
evaluate lot of things we had uh, seven chair persons for uh, seven uh, uh, particular paper presentation session dr usha devi ma'am uh, vinay kumar sir uh, who are also part of our advisory board uh, dr chidanand dhableshwar sir then uh, kamalika ghosh ma'am uh, we had uh, saraswati kumpwade ma'am and uh, we had uh, uh, of course uh, uh, siamala ma'am for one session as chair person uh, it was a fruitful uh, webinar of 7 days a uh, lot of uh, new things uh, were discovered in, during the debates and discussions of the webinar and i'm glad uh, with the guidance of elders we were able to organize this uh, so thank you so much manali for briefly making me to uh, take this opportunity to read the report of the webinar thank you so much thanks a lot nidhi uh, for reading out the report of this webinar and uh, now moving on to the highlight of this session that will be the validity address uh, but before i give up the stage to Uh, Dr. Hemant Dave sir, I would just like to briefly introduce sir. Uh, uh, it is a very uh, brief bio note which sir has sent me. Uh, I am I know that uh, sir's uh, uh, resume is very very long, uh, but uh, we want to give more time for the address itself. So, uh, Dr. Hemant Dave sir studied history, archaeology, and Indian philosophy uh, at the Deccan College, uh, Pune. and uh, he teaches history for the past 20 years in sardar patel university vallabh vidyanagar gujarat his areas of interest and research are archaeology and literary traditions historical consciousness in ancient india sanskrit aesthetics historical linguistics medieval and modern gujarati literature 19th century gujarat and anthropology of religions some of his publications belong to these fields and uh, there is a lot to learn from sir in the field of archaeology especially and in the field of history uh, i now give up the stage to dr hemant dave sir and we are uh, very much uh, uh, interested sir to listen to your valedictory address thank you so much thank you so much manali for inviting me to this valedictory session of itihas saptah 3. zero or 3.2 as you call it uh, i think uh, the history enthusiast group to ask me to say something uh, for this valedictory session this evening uh nandan shastri sir i know him for more than 22 years now and he is a very uh, close uh, closely associated with me when i was just a beginner and it was a very good opportunity for me to connect with him uh, through this history enthusiast group uh, uh see as uh, manali said uh, feminist historiography is not one of the areas in which i work when i consented to be part of this webinar i had little idea what i had to do so i requested manali to give me the link of the lectures which she immediately sent to me and which i had uh time to see some of the lectures and i could understand what uh the lectures were and what the uh, seminar theme was <coughs> now uh the title of your seminar or webinar as you call it is rewriting her story so i will begin this uh, with a small anecdote uh when i was studying my ba one of my teachers he came uh, to our class i think it was fyba first year ba and he said uh, you know what is history so some of the students uh, who were little more uh active than i am or i was they replied this thing is this that some of them uh defined history as they understood it then he wrote on the board 
his story and he say that the word history comes from his story of course through uh, haplology as they call it in linguistics and the class including myself was amused today i am not quite sure if he was joking or serious but i would want to believe that he was both he was joking of course for all serious students of history know the word is not derived from his story to haplology as i said before but from greek historia ultimately from the root vid which means to see to know in greek the word vid means to see to know and it is a cognate word of sanskrit vid to know and latin video which means i see and sanskrit means the sanskrit vid means to know via greek histor this word histor means a wise man uh, when i say wise man i use the word man advisedly because the ancient greeks thought of a wise man and not of a wise woman as it is well known the ancient greek thinkers most notably aristotle did not consider women to be equal to men while many of aristotle's views may be forgiven or viewed with some abusement today it cannot be gain saying especially when we compare his views with his teacher plato that he was a sexist man and aristotle has deeply influenced the western mind so in a way when my sir said that history is derived from history what he perhaps had in mind that uh, history is uh, obsessively concerned with man and his achievements as one of the greatest uh, archaeologist uh, uh, gordon child wrote his one of his very famous books the book title the book the title of the book is man makes himself and not woman makes herself <clears throat> so in a way when we say that uh, uh, it is her story i think it's uh, i think feminist movement has come of age long back and in my opinion it does not require actually and arguably to attract people with eye catching ostensibly vt jugglery with words like writing her story but uh, let it be as it is uh, it is good that for quite some time now historians and why historian alone linguist sociologist anthropologist philosophers and practitioners of many more disciplines have recognized if not always succeeded in documenting the foundational role played by women in different walks of life there have been there have been a number of articles anthologies and other book length studies from feminist perspective however compendious history of india published in the 21st century even by women historians often hailed as magisterial brilliant most complete and so on rarely takes a feminist perspective these histories read as if they have been written by any male historian this is because the dominant historiography is still written in the old mold and feminist historio writing in what into inverted commas <coughs> is assigned to some dedicated specialists this is like philosophy a uh, western it is understood because for them there is no other philosophy but western <coughs> uh global histories of philosophy seldom takes into account indian arabic chinese japanese or african black philosophy these philosophies must be studied written about by specialists who work in the so called asia studies center at the same time it remains to be seen how much critical rationalist scholarship has to say on feminist historiography of india this concerns both the data and the method there are not many works that critically evaluate situate or question earlier generations of feminist historians self reflection or simhava lokana as we say is necessary after certain intervals whether i say or not what i have in mind is the dominant discourse on indian historiography <clears throat> in this necessarily short disjointed and piecemeal discussion i will raise some questions about this scholarship 
feminism rests on the grounding belief that there is inequality in society and women in particular are discriminated against because of gender roles assigned to them by the society it further assumes at least in the early phase of the feminist movement women as a monolithic monochrome class or entity and disregarded it ethnicity religion caste education employment and other aspects like class class for me is a problematic category in indian context and i will return to it so in one of the early anthologies it was said and i quote these essays are confined to the dominant hindu community largely in the north of india and they mainly with the middle classes we feel that the exclusion of all other religious communities and of marginalized groups dalits and tribals agricultural and bonded labor and the slender representation of women belonging to peasant and working class groups is a serious limitation unquote the essays in other words deal with upper caste hindu women of north india indo aryan speaking upper caste hindu women if you will they do not realize it seems that their middle class middle class into inverted comma or the so called middle class which they seem to be treating as a real category is ruptured by caste identities this is because the framework adopted by them is such that it does not acknowledge caste playing a dominant role in identity this is also the case with the studies on labor union movements they also do not take into account the caste uh, factor <coughs> i when i say this i mean most of the studies wishing away caste identities may be an ideological necessity but it does not really help us understand the problems of indian social reality and its bearing on feminist historiography or women studies at large the constant choose of the category of class in fact obliterates the privileges available to women belonging to upper caste of hindu society access to english education in colonial india to women or for that matter to men at large were not because of the immense economical class to which they belonged but because of their high ritual status in other words because of their caste the same applies to the women writers who wrote in english or in desh bhashas like gujarati kannada bangla hindi punjabi or any other language to speak therefore of middle class women into a dramatic commas as and i quote constituting themselves in journals autobiographies poems narratives and diaries unquote and of and i quote the formation of an anglo indian literature and the specific versions of a female sensibility in say turudat or sarojini naidu is not only uncritical but also farther from truth the first diary in gujarati literature was written for example by k m munshi's mother k m munshi you know he was the founder of bharti vidya bhavan and a uh, historian on his own right his mother and the first novel was written by krishna gauri raval both being brahmans munshi's mother came from an affluent family whereas krishna gauri raval herself a primary school teacher hailed from humble background from different economic classes so to speak the first woman graduate and also a major gujarati writer vidya gauri nilkant belonged to the highest sub castes of the brahmanas namely the nagars the position of dalit women and the problems of dalit feminism are therefore altogether different not unlike black women these women are doubly oppressed first by the ritual hierarchy which refuses any rights to them because of their low in fact stigmatized social status second they are manipulated controlled and subjected to violence 
by the Dalit man. This intersectional discrimination must not be lost sight of when we talk of writing her story. At the same time, it is also true that a Dalit or a tribal or a Bahujan Samaj women enjoys more choices of freedom, economic freedom than a high caste Hindu woman. In fact, Gopal Guru's seminal essay, Dalit Women Talk Differently, is said to have critiqued, and I quote, Brahmanical feminism for its hegemonic impulse to speak for or in the name of Indian women. So when we talk about class, more often than not, we seem to go away with class, which uh, should not be done, in my opinion. So this is one of the major uh, limitation in my mind or in my opinion uh, when uh, feminist historiography uh, is concerned. <clears throat> I come next to how we deal with our text from a feminist perspective. It was said in one of the lectures that, and I quote, texts are frozen in particular time and thus they do not <coughs> And thus, they do not give us diachronic nature of society and changes that are happening in it. Texts are frozen, of course, but so is archaeological evidence. An inscription or a coin or a pottery shirt is equally frozen. Texts and archaeological artifacts were not left behind so that we could write a diachronic history later. They were produced and consumed for a specific purpose and in some or many cases discarded after having served that purpose. We for our own ends use this evidence, cherry pick some and weave a narrative around in accordance with our political ideology. Some cherry pick Gargi and Maitreyi as representative of ancient Indian women other peak Shala Banjika and other sculptural images of women and think that ancient Indian women moved about naked in society. This is like taking Parmenides, Plato Socrates. I say Plato Socrates because we do not know whether what Socrates in actuality believed. We know as Plato has portrayed him in his dialogues. That is why I say Plato Socrates. So Parmenides. Plato, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Galon, and some other intellectuals as representing the Greek mind and by some bizarre extension, the Western mind. We know that not all Greek people thought the same way Plato or Aristotle thought, but still we think that Greek mind was one of the base minds in ancient world. So uh, this is how it is. For some other reasons, historians try to steer clear of Maitreyi and Gargay and concentrate on Vedic Dasi. Those who challenge the stereotype representation of Indian women bring forth another set of stereotypes. This we have seen and those who have studied Indian historiography, they do know very well the debates between the imperialist historians and the nationalist historians. The Mahabharata and the Ramayana have many interpolations. If we study these interpolations, we get interesting results. This I am saying when we say that the stacks are frozen, but when we take into account the interpolations, we see that the texts are not as frozen as they are thought to be. Because there have been a constant uh, attempt to you know, uh, improvise or uh, uh, improve upon these uh, ancient texts. If you study these interpolations, we get interesting results. And why these interpretation uh, interpolations took place? As D.D. Kosambi wrote regarding the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, and I quote him, the lower classes were necessarily an audience. This made the epic, he calls Ramayana and Mahabharata epic, but in our tradition, uh, they are not called epic, they are called itihasa. It is the Western uh, uh, scholars who call Ramayana and Mahabharata epic, and that is why 
many of us uh, speak of Mahabharata and Ramayana as epic. Anyway, this made the epic a most convenient vehicle for any doctrine which the Brahmins wanted to insert. Even better than rewriting the Puranas or faking new Puranas for age-old cults. So, in a way, these interpolations or these uh, 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 insertions were used as Titi uh, Kosambi says it as a convenient vehicle for any doctrine which the Brahmins wanted to insert. <coughs> now we take up one instance to see how these uh, uh, insertions or interpolations were used as what E.B. Althusser calls ideological state apparatuses. We know that Hindu society allows joking relation between Bhabi and Devar. Or uh, I advisedly do not use words like sister-in-law and brother-in-law because they are uh, confusing. And I I think that most of us, most of the uh, listeners, they understand what is Babi and what is Deva. Until recently, liberate marriages, marriage with the younger brother after the death of one's husband is called a liberate marriage. Until recently, leverage marriages were socially acceptable. The movie Ek Chaddar Malisi is based on this. It, 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 it deals with this problem of uh, uh, leverage marriages. Uh, and in earlier times, uh, women were not married to a man, but to the family. For example, in Maharashtra, uh, we do not see that uh, for example, if I give my instance, Hemant is marrying Nirmala, but it will say, it will write Daves and Sharmas, you know, like that, because the marriage takes place between, not between a man and a woman, but between two families. And words like Bade Papa, Chote Papa, in Gujarati we call Bhota Bapu, or in Kannada, uh, Bade Papa is called Gurdappa, and Chote Papa is called Chinnappa are quite significant from this perspective. In Ramayana, Angad calls Sukriv Yaviyan Pita, which means younger father. Yaviyan Pita means younger father. In Pali literature, we find uh, terms like Chull Pita. Chull means small, Chote Pita. And in Yask, in his Niruk says, while defining the word uh, or etymologizing this word Devar, uh, he says, which means the word Deva is derived from Dvitiyavar, another husband. This is how Yaskar defines. This means that uh, Levirate was a socially uh, sanctioned custom in ancient India. But in modern times, when this relation came to be looked down upon in society, it was found necessary to interpolate stories in our, our Itihas Granthas. When I say Itihas Granthas, what I mean is Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Uh, the very famous couplet, Naham Janami Keyure, Naham Janami Kundane, Nupure Tva Bijanami Lityam Paya Vandanath. The story goes like this after Sita was abducted by Raman, Ram and Lakshman. They started searching for Sita and they came to Kishkinda where they met Hanumana first and then they met Sukriv. Uh, in the talking, Sukriv tells him that when uh, there was this man who was taking away forcibly a fair woman, she dropped certain things and then Ram asks him, to bring those things so that he could recognize if they belong to Sita or not. When these uh, uh, ornaments are brought, Rama, Rama's eyes are filled with tears and he is unable to see. So he asked Lakshmana whether he can recognize these uh, ornaments. And it is here that Lakshmana says, Naham Janami Keyure, 
केवल जो हाथ में पहना जाता है ब्रेसलेट ना हम जाना है केयूर नो आई एम सॉरी केयूर मीन्स पायल तो आई डू नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज पायल केयूर ना हम जाना है कुंडले आई डू नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज नो नो आई एम रियली सॉरी आई एम गुफिंग इट आप ही सेज आई डू नॉट नो वॉट इज हुज ब्रेसलेट्स आर दिस और आई डू नॉट नो द इिंग्स नो पूरे तो भी जाना नहीं आई कैन ओनली रिकॉग्नाइज the anklets and why he knew that these nupurs or anklets belong to sita because nityam paya bhi vandanat because i used to go to her feet every day i recognize this uh, anklets this means in a way that lakshman never looked at sita's face or upper part of the body now this couplet is not there in the critical edition of the maharaj bharata which was published by the ms university of baroda but it is there in the gita press uh, edition uh, it is not there in the ram charita manas of tulsi das in fact in the ram charita manas of tulsi das the story is given slightly differently when sugriv told rama that sita dropped her uttariya saying them rama wants to see it see there is no reference to ku there is no reference to kundals there is no reference to nupu what he says uh, he he talks about uttariya and rama uh, rama desires to see it when sukri brings the uttariya rama immediately recognizes it and laments and tulsida says ram ram ha ram pukari hum hi dekh hi din he upatdari maga ram पट उरलाई सोच अति किन्हा व्हेन सीता वाज टेकन अवे फोर्सिबली बाय रावण शी वाज सेइंग राम राम हा राम एंड देन व्हेन शी सो मी सुक्रीव देन शी ड्रॉप्ड हर उत्तरीय एंड व्हेन राम आस्क फॉर इट सुक्री गिव्स गिव्स इट इमीडिएटली एंड देन राम टेकिंग इट टू हिज हार्ट टू हिज चेस्ट and he laments this means that this couplet uh, naham janami keure naham janami kundale nupure tro pi janami nityam paya vivindanat was inserted after tulsidas wrote his ramcharitamanas and it seems almost certain to me that this couplet was added in all probability after the 16th century a hindi poet anandi lal shrivastava आनंदी लाल श्रीवास्तव रोट अ पोएम ऑन द इवेंट ऑन दिस इंसिडेंट एंड देन लेमेंटिंग द करंट सिचुएशन ही सेज किंतु आज कल के समाज के प्रतिगृह में बस है यही हाल बाल गूंथते देवर गिनते भावज के सब सिर के बाल करो प्रचार न कामुकता का रख कर ऐसे रीति रिवाज नहीं अन्यथा कभी चलेगा उन्नति पथ पर बृहद समाज विच मीन्स दैट आनंदी लाल श्रीवास्तव इज अ हिंदी पोएट ही सेज दैट द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन बाबी एंड देवर इज इज नॉट ही डज नॉट लाइक द काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप दैट बाबी एंड देवर शेयर एंड ही सेज दैट this is like uh, kamuk taka prachar and this kind of riti rivaz he says just uh, as i said karo prachar na kamuk taka rakh kar aise riti rivaz otherwise our society will never uh, 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 be on the uh, uh, path of progress and nahi anyatha kabhi chalega unnati path par bruhat samaj uh, what is important is despite this despite this naham janani kevur or despite anvilans this poem even today the relationship between babi and devar are of a joking relation and not avoidance relation shows how deep rooted our customs are <coughs> the five ordeal of sita is another example of this tendency uh, as we know because nil madhav sen has 
already drawn our attention even before uh, this uh, uh, critical edition of the Ramayana was published. He showed in his Shritar Shastri Vare Abhinandan Granth that this fire ordeal of Sita is a later in Colossians. And when this uh, 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 critical edition of the Ramayana was published, uh, another article was written by the general editor D. H. Uh, G. H. Hutt, and he also showed that the fire ordeal of Sita is a later interpolation. So, to repeat the idea of chastity of a Pati Vrata Stri, this fire ordeal of Sita was inserted into the Ramayana. Uh, the lament of Tara after the death of Vali is also inserted in the Ramayana for the same reason. And when uh, 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 Hanuman's mother, when she was, uh, uh, she says that who wants to break my uh, pati vratapva? So these kind of interpolations are uh, uh, used, as I said before, ideological state of emphasis only to debate certain ideas uh, which were. Uh, which they thought should be uh, followed by the society. In the Mahabharata, in the Shanti Parva, we say that uh, there, there is this story, I will not go into the story, but the, uh, it ends like something like this. this uh, there is this couple of uh, vision and when the quote-unquote uh, husband, uh, the male or husband uh, pigeon dies, the female pigeon or the wife Pati Vrata vision becomes Sati after him. And it is said that Na karyam, na karyam me natha jivate na kvaya vina. What will I do when you are not there? And remember that this is said by the female pigeon. Na karyam me natha jivate na kvaya vina. Pati hinati kanari sati jivatu mutsehait. Without husband, what a uh, 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 nari will do? There is no utsah in her life. Evam vilipya bahuda karunam sasa dukhita pati vrata sad pradiptam pravivesham utashanam. And she, this pati vrata pigeon, uh, uh, female pigeon or pati vrata uh, 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 pigeon enters fire. So these uh, interpolations, uh, this interpolation in particular, is inserted to support the very heinous uh, tradition of uh, sati, which was there, and to show that it was, you know, uh, natural. Because even uh, uh, the animals and birds they follow this tradition. Then why not uh, human beings? So these kind of stories show an extreme of uh, an extreme example of such uh, 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 tendency on the part of those who wanted these traditions uh, to be continued in society. Uh, now, with this, I come to another uh, uh, point which uh, I will be speaking about in this uh, short discussion on feminist historiography. Uh, as one of the speakers put it, I am not interested any longer in what the British or the West thought about us. But questions, but question things from feminist, humanist, equalitarian paradigm perspective. This I find uncritical for it assumes rather naively that this feminist, humanist, equalitarian paradigm has emerged from Indian feminist writers from within, without any influence from without. Because this feminist, humanist, humanist equalitarian paradigm is clearly derived from the Western discourse on feminism. It has its roots in feminist movement, as I said, that emerged elsewhere, namely in the West, and has been shaped and informed by colonial history. The questions, methods, the tools, and the paradigm itself 
the word paradigm itself speaks for Kuhnian conception of history of science are imported. It is an altogether a different point that such theoretical formulations, as has been rightly pointed out, and I quote, need constant testing and overhauling by historically, materially specific studies. They need to be reformulated in light of data, in other words. There is a, another flip side too. Any meaningful contribution to knowledge needs to take into account previous scholarship. What has been said about a given topic is important for any new departure. It was only through painstaking collection of facts that the so-called nationalist historians could rebut the claims put forward by the imperialist orientalist historians. Uh, first, about method. Is there a feminist method of doing history? Should the practitioners of such history depend on textual sources or archaeological sources or both? If there is a conflict between an archaeological source and a textual source, which one should be given in preference? More often than not, such decisions are taken not after a careful consideration of available evidence, but are influenced by political positions one takes. In her influential essay, Whatever Happened to the Vedic Dasi, uh, and it is not so much concerned about Vedic Dasi, but how uh, during the colonial period, the Orientalists and Nationalists constructed an image of Aryan women ignoring or oblivious of contrary evidence. This is uh, uh, Uma Chakravarti's argument that uh, Vedic Dasi has been completely uh, sidelined by the Nationalist historians. Uh, now she speaks of the myth of the golden age of Indian womanhood as located in the Vedic period. And then she says, the Aryan woman, and I quote, the Aryan woman, the progenitor of upper caste woman as the only object of historical concern. From this, she pointedly remarks, and I quote her, it is no wonder that the Vedic Dasi, woman in servitude, captured, subjugated and enslaved by the conquering Aryans, but who also represents one aspect of Indian womanhood, disappeared without leaving any trace of herself in the 19th century." Unquote. Remember that this essay was published in 1989 when the Aryan invasion theory was abandoned and put to quietus. The idea of invasion was replaced by migration, of subjugation with amalgamation, of capture with cultural and linguistic interaction. But still, Chakravarti speaks of invasion, conquer, capture and subjugation. She further says, glossing over certain aspects of the past was a characteristic feature of the work of Orientalists, who did not particularly react to the specific forms of inequality of caste, class and gender prevailing in India." Unquote. Uh, in my opinion, uh, such glossing over, as he calls it, it's a characteristic, uh, characteristic feature not only of Orientalist discourse. It should be clear that when I, uh, 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 it should be clear, but I may nevertheless point out that Chakravarti's usage of the term Orientalist and Orientalism is non sadian uh, This is a characteristic feature not only of Orientalist discourse, but of any discourse. More shockingly, this glossing over is attributed to Brahmins. She assumes that, and I quote her, partly the lack of concern for caste, class and gender inequality may be explained as a natural consequence of their heavy reliance, their means Orientalists, their heavy reliance on the conservative indigenous literati, the Brahmin Pandits. It is doubtful uh, quote, uh, unquote. It is doubtful if this, uh, if in its early days of Orientalism, the Brahmins were aware of the category of class, but let it be. This explanation is problematic on two grounds. First, it supposes that the Orientalists were gullible enough to have been influenced by the crafty Brahmins. Second, the Brahmins, I mean all the castes of India, are supremely aware of their position in the society. In fact, 
all castes in india know their position in the society which has been considered as one of the characteristic features of caste system so these brahmins are supremely aware of their position in the society and of the ritual social and religious inequalities and are ever ready to show that they occupy a prime place in the socio religious hierarchy so to say that this uh, uh, caste caste and gender inequality was uh, glossed over because this uh, brahmins who informed or did not inform of this uh, discrimination is not a very uh, sound argument to me how then chakravarti attributes this glossing over to brahmins remains unclear to me her contention that indigenous literati were active agents in constructing the past and were consciously engaged in choosing particular elements from the embryonic body of knowledge flowing from their own current social and political concerns is true but it must be put pointed out at the same time that chakravarti's choice of falling back upon vedic dasi is also her it, it is is for her current social and political concerns and that she is engaged as an active agent in constructing the past i point out this for many students think that history writing is an innocent altruistic objective and scientific activity they are so late to believe this more so because of the critique historians like chakravarti offer of all previous scholarship on the subject as for the vedic dasi which chakravarti about which chakravarti uh, wrote and i quote her no one tried to read the ancient texts to see what rights the vedic dasi and other like her had in vedic golden age recognizing her existence would have been an embarrassment to the nationalists now in her opinion it is clear that the vedic dasi was because she talks about aryan invasion and subjugation and capture it is clear that uh, for her the vedic dasi was ethnically a different category from the invading aryans uh, now in the latest translation of the rugveda uh, stefani jemison and bereton uh, let's see what they have to write about this uh, the shu and dasa and they write hail is inclined and i quote them hail is inclined to see a racial distinction between the aryas and the dasyus or dasa that is not justified by the evidence which means there was no racial difference between the aryas on one hand and the shus and the dasas on the other i say this because many a time our uh, overarching formulations or our uh, generalizations are not supported by evidence and uh, then this kind of uh, uh, overarching uh, formulations or generalizations have are, are taken as a uh, 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 self explanatory truths so i think i i have spoken more than uh, uh, half an hour uh, uh, do you want me to continue or should i stop here so you can take another 5 to 10 minutes no problem okay so i will take up this because uh, in the first lecture in the inaugural lecture uh, the learned author spoke uh, on uh, mahabharata and ramayana and he uh, showed how this uh, women like draupadi sita and to some extent ahilya were subjected to sexual violence uh, in my opinion uh, or uh, as i see it the question is how a feminist would look at this depiction and how she would reinterpret uh, i i use this word uh, i use this uh, uh, pronoun she for feminist historian or how she would interpret this incidents from a feminist perspective it is not that such perspective is not available to us from the itihas granthas sairendra's anger knows no bound when she is humiliated in the court of kichak in the court of virata by kichaka who kicks her she goes to bhima in the night and rebukes him 
and she says uttishto uttishta kimshesha vimsena yathamrutah namrutasya hi papi yan bhagyat labhyativati he says vimsena you are sleeping like a dead man and how after insulting your wife somebody can still be alive she is so angry with uh, 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 with the incident that she was humiliated by kichaka and she says that whenever kichak asks me to marry him my heart ruptures like a ripe fruit nitya meva ha dushtatma bharya mama bhaveti me bharya mama bhaveti is said by uh, uh, kichaka he says you become my wife and she says kalaneva phalam pakvam hrudayam vividiryate as pakvam phalam like a pakvam phalam my hrudayam vidiryate my heart ruptures when he tells me be my wife my heart ruptures like a ripe fruit now this uh, 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 description by uh, it's a very long i don't want to go into the entire uh, conversation that takes place between bhima and uh, 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 sairendri or draupadi but uh, in my opinion uh, this conversation between bhima and sairendri and especially whatever sairendri speaks uh, regarding kichaka and her uh, anger with yudhishthir for example she she is so angry with uh, uh, yudhishthir then she says that because of because of that gambler we are in this condition the sanskrit uh, uh, word is akshatuch akshatu durtasya karanat akshadurta means yudhishthir this is all because of that akshadurta this is all because of yudhishthir and she is so angry as i said before that she calls yudhishthir akshadurta uh, this is the feeling that any woman who does not like a man who approaches her against her wishes or inclinations there are a number of cases of women being killed in public either by a bullet or by sharp weapons or even by setting them ablaze the the condition of this women or the mental condition i am sure i i do i am not a woman uh, but i can imagine that the condition of this women who are approached by men whom they don't like uh, is almost the same whatever draupadi says uh, in her conversation with bhima <clears throat> and she says that uh, if even if uh, i will uh, uh, i will drink poison i will take poison uh, i will prefer to kill myself rather than going in his arms and she says visham malodya pasyami ma kichakam vasham gamam shreyo hi maranam mahyam bhimasena tavagratah this is what she says that i will take wish poison and i i i i will i will prefer to be dead rather than going to him so this uh, this kind of uh, uh, conversation or this kind of uh, airing her views about uh, uh, her uh, sexual violence or uh, the advancement made by kichaka uh, i think uh, someone may in future collect such uh, uh, you know uh, uh, portions and uh, and can study this in future how uh, 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 ancient indian women uh, thought about uh, such advancement made by uh, people like uh, uh, teacher kan and i think i should stop here uh, i will be happy if uh, there are any questions i do not say that i will be able to answer the question but i will try to uh, if if i i have any answer i will try to answer that sure sir uh, first of all i want to thank you very much for this very intriguing and uh, interesting uh, valedictory address uh, because i am um, sure it has uh, everyone in the uh, virtual gathering is now forced to contemplate uh, about how uh, perceptions were how things were different how women uh have a different kind of uh, perception and how so so far the story is being written and how it has to be so there are multiple ways of looking at the same thing and uh, uh your uh, 
address has highlighted that very very uh, efficiently sir uh, as um, you uh, uh, it is okay to take questions i request if any of the participants have any questions we will take only one or two questions uh manali uh, i have a question so with your permission can i go ahead sure yeah so firstly it was really very wonderful uh, valedictory uh, talk thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, being available to us thank you sir uh, so i had a question uh, why particularly for all the rituals traditions and customs particularly for pujas in temples women were not uh, selected as mathadipatis or priests in india was there any one particular cause behind it any one particular reason or multiple reasons i'm not able to get the answer from many years so that's why yes see uh, i don't know uh, about other parts of uh, india but in gujarat for quite some time now women and not necessarily uh, brahmin women they have been officiating as priests see hinduism is not a fossilized religion uh, it has evolved over a period of time so far your uh, so far as your question is concerned see hinduism is not the only religion which uh, uh, pre-termits uh, pre or does not allow uh, women to uh, do certain uh, religious, uh, I mean, rituals. Uh, this could be for multiple reasons. Uh, one of them is surely uh, the menstruation thing because in all uh, societies, uh, from the tribal societies to the most uh, i mean when i say most advanced i mean pre industrialist most advanced societies they have their own norms uh, for this uh, menstruation cycles so during this uh, menstruation cycles uh, this women are thought of as impure during those 4 5 days or 6 days but then by extension it seems to me that uh, it was uh, you know uh, uh, sorry uh, i i think there was someone else anyway so because of this uh, menstruation they were not allowed to take part in uh, certain rituals but in certain rituals their uh, presence was uh, necessary for example in the rama itself when uh, uh, when sita has been sent away uh, in the uttarakhand as we know that the uttarakhand is entirely interpolated in the ramayana but when he wants to do this yagna <coughs> ashwamedh yagna uh, 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 because he didn't have his saha dharmacharini uh, there was this uh, 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 statue of his wife was put uh, next to her. <clears throat> so I think it is mainly because of this uh, 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 menstruation thing that they were not uh, allowed in ancient times to uh, uh, officiate rituals. Uh, uh, for example, in Islam, uh, no woman can enter the mosque. So this kind of uh, uh, what you call taboos or uh, 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 put uh, for uh, this is what I feel. I think, and there are uh, there are uh, in later Vedic period. Then uh, sometimes uh, uh, women were uh, equated with shudras, and they were denied of. Uh, and but see, see, I must say that this was uh, there is this ambivalence on this uh, uh, thing. For example, in the Rama itself, when uh, the news of Rama going to the forest was broken to KK uh, uh, Kaushalya, she was doing sandhya in her uh, in her in her room. 
So now this, when somebody is doing sandhya, it means that they, she recited uh, Vedic, uh, you know, dhruchas. Uh, even in, in the Ramayana itself, when uh, uh, Shravan is killed, and uh, and he says that I am not a Brahmin, I am, uh, my father is a Vaishya and my mother is a Shudra. And Manu uh, says that uh, such sons would be called, uh, belonging to the mixed caste called Karana. But even Shravan, he says that uh, I used to perform sandhyas and all. So see, there is this ambivalence uh, or there are different opinions uh, whether a Shudra can perform a sandhya or not, or uh, a woman can perform a sandhya or not. For example, in the, uh, in, in the Kadambari, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, uh, it is said that uh, uh, Mahashweta was, uh, uh, this uh, Upanayan Samskar was done for Mahashweta. So, uh, there are uh, contradictory evidence uh, available to us, which uh, says that some people say, or some lawmakers say that women were not allowed to, for example, while uh, writing his uh, uh, Bhashya on Brihadarani Kutnishad, where it is said that if you want a woman who is proficient in the Vedas, and Shankara, while writing his uh, uh, Bhashya on this uh, particular thing, he says that uh, uh, this means uh, not proficiency in Veda, but in Gruha Karya. And why? Why so? Because, uh, 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 because they have no right to study the uh, Veda, Veda Swadhyaya Anadhikarat or something like that. So, um, uh, there was this ambivalence. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I mean, whether I have uh, uh, satisfied your query or not, but uh, mainly because of this uh, 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 menstruation thing that they were not allowed to uh, participate uh, as uh, Mathatipatis. Uh, maybe in future we'll see some of them as Mathatipatis. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for wonderful answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was really a uh, very uh, interesting and uh, thought-provoking uh, uh, valedictory address. Uh, moving on to the next part of the session. Uh, without feedback, there cannot be uh, a, what uh, progress or uh, perfection. And therefore, the feedback of all the participants of this uh, entire webinar uh, is very, very valuable to us. It is our aim to excel. And for that, uh, it is very necessary to uh, get the inputs from our participants. So first of all, I would like to call upon uh, Madiha Ahmed Khan uh, to give her feedback on the webinar. Hi, Hello, uh, Namaste and Assalamu Alaikum everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Nidhi and Manali for organizing such a uh, big webinar on every day, you guys. I, I, I can see that how much with the energy and efficiency you both were sitting and listening to each and every participant and giving your feedback and it's really hard to remember everything and I really want to on your at your age like I can see that you guys are so young and you guys are doing so well. So I just want to congratulate you for, for the energy you, you guys are having for doing such thing. And it, it's a very like time taking process and you guys are so knowledgeable and you guys, uh, uh, and I want to wish you all the best for the future goes because uh, you will, I hope that you will pursue this uh, uh, in coming years as well. I uh, and I really enjoyed uh, listening to the Indian culture and I didn't know anything because I never studied. So through this webinar, uh, I think it was very informative for me as well. I learned a lot of things and and uh, and it is really uh, uh, and I, I and I really feel acknowledged that uh, uh, by studying that uh, we were studying women and uh, success of the women and uh, we were celebrating women uh, through this webinar. So good luck and uh, uh, and I, I hope you will uh, organize more webinars like these. So we really need to appreciate women. Yeah. Thank you so much, Madiha, for your kind words. 
uh, definitely we will uh, have more such uh, endeavors and uh, we hope that you will also be part of the future ones uh, yes we will try definitely we will definitely we will try to participate thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, thank you so much for your appreciation thanks a lot yeah. thank you so much nidhi and you did a lot of hard work because i was always uh, wanted to con uh, uh, like contribute uh, uh, coordinate uh, you were coordinating so well because i am in us right now i am doing my masters and i i was when i was back in my country so it's a 12 hours difference as as well and uh, now it's a morning time so thank you so much for uh, uh, for your patience <laughs> uh, so yeah thank you my for pleasure everything. my pleasure thank you so much yeah uh, you're welcome i now request dr kushal singh uh, to please express his uh, views about the webinar congratulations nidhi ma'am and uh, manali ma'am aapka ye webinar uh, kafi kuch मेरे को तो सिखा के गया साथ में मेरे स्टूडेंट्स ने आपके इस वेबिनार को बीच बीच में अटेंड किया और काफी स्टूडेंट्स इस वेबिनार को अप्रिसिएट करते रहे और जितने एक इंडिया के टॉप इंस्टीट्यूशन से आपके रिसोर्स पर्सन रहे उन रिसोर्स पर्सन से हमें बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला सो so, कंग्रेचुलेशन आपकी टीम को बहुत बहुत बधाई आपको बहुत बहुत बधाई आप टाइम टू टाइम समय से आप सभी को ऐसे जोड़ते रहे उसके लिए आपको मैं एक बार दोबारा से पुनः शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ और काफी कुछ मेरे को हिस्ट्री का स्टूडेंट हूं नहीं बट एक टूरिज्म सेक्टर और टूरिज्म का स्टूडेंट होने के बाद भी मैंने हिस्ट्री में काफी कुछ सीखने को मिला सो थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर प्रोवाइड टू द वंडरफुल प्लेटफॉर्म थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर कुशल uh for your very very kind words and uh, we are happy that you could become a history enthusiast uh through this uh, through this platform of the history enthusiasts we are so happy uh, and it is our main aim to uh, spread awareness of history and to uh, make the uh, to popularize the history of the marginalized and we are happy that it has impacted this much uh now uh for the thing that we have been waiting with a bated breath um actually this is our first publication um uh, as an association as an organization and even as individuals uh, for me and nidhi this is the first time uh, that we are uh, publishing a volume uh, of course it is an e publication but still it counts and uh, we are so so happy uh, to present to you all uh, the uh, our uh, a uh, little endeavor in the form of a ebook uh, that is the webinar proceedings volume rewriting her story i request i have created a very small clip a one minute clip because i do not know how we release books on an online platform platform <laughs> so uh, yes i request nidhi to please uh, share this video uh, which is going to be the symbolic uh, release of the volume uh sure manali uh, thank you sir um yeah manali i am sharing the screen please allow me to share the screen oh sorry yeah okay yes just give me a minute i am sharing it. and for this particular uh, uh proceedings volume i am very very thankful to all the participants who contributed their uh, papers i am also thankful to the co uh, chief editor and the editors manali is the screen visible the screen is visible dear please uh, yes, yes, share please. it with sound from the beginning. yeah yes uh, you on switch on the sound first yes yes we cannot hear the sound nidhi Okay, never mind. So these are the cover pages, the front cover page and the back cover page. Our chief editor, Dr. Shiladhar Mugli. Our editors, Dr. Chidanand Dhavleshwar sir and Dr. Ramesh Kamble. Uh, me and Nidhi being the assistant editors. Nandan sir has uh, written the preface of this uh, volume. And our special thanks to all the scholars and all the students who have uh, 
uh, heartily contributed their papers and their abstracts uh, to our publication thank you all so very much and also our uh, thanks to the publishers uh, ideal internationally publication uh, for uh, uh, helping us in this process of publication thank you all so very much right uh, we, we will thank you so much sir thank you we thank will you share sir. the link of the um, isbn uh, uh, publication shortly in the webinar group and we will also share this video you can all share it everywhere and um, uh, everybody can read and understand the various aspects of her story the various dimensions and the various perspectives uh, through which a woman's life and journey can be seen and understood i request you all to kindly do that uh, now moving on uh, this uh, this webinar it has just started as a webinar and then uh, nandan sir came forward and he told that uh, uh, we should have actually this was a, a, a joint idea our uh, the secretary of the history enthusiast dr madhuri chaugle uh, said that there should be prizes for the best paper uh, for young researchers it will encourage and uh, motivate and also there will be a lot of um, you know incentive to come out with very great papers and uh, i know it was a very very tough decision for all the chair persons as well as the ultimate judge of the best papers that was nandan sir uh, because sir has sponsored a sum of rupees 5000 for the prizes so it was a very tough decision uh, but we had to make that tough decision uh, sir had to make that tough decision in fact and we have come up with five names for the best papers and uh, i will just ask nidhi to share on the screen the certificates of these five people one by one as i announce them sure <laughs> so nidhi i would like to start from the last please okay sure so we had four prizes the first prize uh, was a cash prize of rupees 2000 a second prize cash prize of rupees 1500 the third prize uh, certificate and cash prize of rupees 1000 and the consolation prize which was cash prize of rupees 500 and uh, i want to announce the name of the winner of the consolation prize first are you sharing it nidhi uh yes manali i have shared it uh, i cannot see we cannot see it yeah. uh Okay, I have shared the entire screen just. Okay, the consolation prize first. Please. Yes. 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 So the consolation prize goes to Miss Vidya Shri Halkeri Mat, research scholar, Department of. Uh, uh, Nidhi, you have shared the other prizes. Just, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. So it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's, fine. Uh, it's okay. Uh, Ms. Vidya Shri Halkeri Mat, Research Scholar, Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Karnataka State Open University, Mysore. Uh, her paper was on a very interesting topic: the impact of gender portrayal in advertising media on women's perspectives, uh, perception. Sorry, a critical analysis. It was a really uh, interesting paper. And uh, yes, here is the certificate for. Ms. Vidya Shri Halkeri Mat, congratulations on behalf of the entire uh, team of the history enthusiasts. Uh, now I would like to announce the third prize, which is shared by two co-authors. They are both co-authors of this paper. Uh, I will tell the name of the paper first. The title of the paper is "Women in Early Medieval Kashmir." So we know uh, the co-authors of this paper. Anindya Sanyal and Preeti Rawat from the Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. If this was an on-site event, I would ask for a huge round of applause. But uh, uh, everybody from their own uh, homes, uh, I request you all to congratulate 
these two winners Absolutely. of the third prize. Yes. Nidhi, did you share? Uh, yeah, I have shared the screen. Uh, if it's visible, let me know, please. It is not. It's not. Okay. So yeah, the uh, prizes were uh, for the category of stu uh, students and scholars between the age of 18 to 35. And uh, I want to move on to the second prize. So Arika Just give me a minute. I'm sharing the third prize screen. Yes, please. Wait for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there is blank screen, Nidhi. We cannot see anything. Uh, is it visible now? No, there's just a blank screen. Okay. There is some issue, I guess, with the sh screen sharing. Let me just check it. Sure. Just wait for a while. I'm just fixing this. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Now is it visible? No, still blank screen. No, dear, I have shared the whole screen. Let me just stop and reshare it. Yeah, please. And <sighs> until then, I would like to uh, give the credits of designing the... Uh, certificate uh, it will not be giving it will be taking credit because i did the <laughs> designing of the certificate and also the front uh, cover page illustration and i want to give the credit for the back cover page to nidhi because she did the illustration for the back cover page of the proceedings volume uh, this is the certificate for anindya sanyal uh, and uh, also the co-author of this paper preeti rawat Preeti. Uh, Nidhi, Preeti's certificate was missing. Yes. Uh, it's there. It's on the screen, Manali. It's not. You have screen, screen gone. sharing. I don't know why. Uh, it's blank yeah, screen. Um, Again, blank screen. I really want to announce the second prize. Yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah, please continue with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but it would be great if you could you could just share reshare it because we sure. have to show the second I'm, prize also. I'm trying to do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Yes. No, dear, it's not visible. No, is it? Uh, you know, just stop sharing once and reshare. Okay. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, yeah, no. can you see the screen, Manali? I have shared it. Yeah, still the blank screen. No? No. Not showing. I'm sorry for this. I know it happens. Yeah. Once in a while it happens to everyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Okay. Um, let me just go ahead and announce the second prize. Sure. Then. Sure, sure. Okay. So here's a certificate for Preeti Rawat. Also a postgraduate school. Okay. So... Uh, special thanks and uh, congratulations to both these Anindya Sanyal and Preeti Rawat. They are both postgraduate students and um, they had a wonderful paper. My uh, uh, next announcement for the second prize. Uh, the second prize goes to Ridhima Narayan, Research Scholar, Department of English, CCSU, Meerut. Uh, her paper was on the uh, title reinforcement of sexism through instagram's gendered memes in india so another uh, very different but very very interesting uh, uh, title uh, nidhi please share the certificate of uh, ridhima narayan of course we will be sending the certificates to the uh, 
present uh, to the participants i have shared it manali it's on the screen just that, check it that is preeti rawat's certificate no redima's certificate just now i have shared it i hope it's visible not, to you not showing so <clears throat> uh once again congratulations to the winner of the second prize and uh, we are all waiting for the announcement of the first prize yeah yes yes that's that's the one uh, so congratulations to ridhima narayan on uh, securing the second prize and moving on to the last one uh, that is also the first one so the first prize is uh, secured by kritika punya a research scholar of the department of history ranchi university jharkhand her paper was on the topic gender constructs in indian ramayan traditions um, it was very well presented very scholarly and uh, absolutely uh, mesmerizing to hear you kritika and uh, thank you so much and congratulations thank you to the, to the entire team thank you so much manali thank you nidhi thank you sir thank you uh, yes congratulations congratulations to yes, all, thank you so all the winners all uh, of them. yes yes uh shams wanted to share a few words as feedback uh i request you by the time nidhi shares the uh, certificate uh you have to unmute yourself shams uh dear dr hemant bhai uh, manali nidhi and uh, other fellow history enthusiasts am i audible uh yes Perfectly. sir just one minute sir shams was uh, uh saying something and uh, nidhi is still supposed to share the last uh, certificate mm -hmm. and uh, after all right. that after that i will invite you to yes. speak all right yeah yes, shams you are not audible mm -hmm. still not audible uh, nidhi the last one certificate yes okay uh all right so i think uh, there is some issue with the uh, network uh at shams end and so i now request our honorary president shri nandan shastri ji and also the sponsor of these um prizes to uh, uh, address the virtual gathering dear dr hamant bhai Uh, manali nidhi and other fellow history enthusiast we all the members of the core committee of the group are overwhelmed by the grand success of itihas sapta 3.0 which is in fact uh, has followed all the international norms our group has its headquarters at hubali karnataka it is heartening to note that the creators of the group nidhi and manali have been receiving good cooperation and guidance from scholars from karnataka which propagates the notion that think globally but act locally now oh, our group has expanded at the national level i heartily congratulate all the uh, for researchers who have been awarded prizes a uh, long live our history and theos group and before ending my talk i would like to uh, note that uh, uh, right from our inaugural session to valedictory session uh, we have uh, so many experts so we we are very lucky uh, 
from United States uh, Tom Breaking University, uh, one of the top ranking uh, University of California, Berkeley. Uh, Dr. Hammond Bai uh, has uh, studied in Deccan College, uh, uh, Pune, and now he's in a uh, Sardar Patel University. Uh, just to mention a few, and uh, our publication, I think it is a landmark in the history of our history and enthusiast group. So I congratulate uh, our chief editor, Dr. Mugali, and the entire team. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks to all these of our valedictory function. Thank you very much, sir. And you have always been a great source of inspiration and guidance to us. Um, I want to acknowledge here, without the support of our honorary president, Nandan sir, uh, the entire webinar would not have been possible. Uh, at the most, we could have had a series of lectures. But uh, to bring it to such an international level was only possible because of his constant guidance and support. So I want to thank you here, sir, for that. Uh, now, let's have... Uh, Manali, just a minute. Uh, Shams has yeah. texted his uh, feedback in the chat box because he was not able to join through audio. Sure. I just read out his uh, uh, feedback. Of course. Uh, I wanted to thank all of you, uh, Srinandan ji, Ms. Manali, Ms. Nidhi, and all other history enthusiasts. The entire program has been carried out so uh, astutely. All the best. That is the feedback which she has given. Thank you so much, Shams, uh, for being part of this uh, webinar and also for presenting your paper, which was wonderful. Thank you so much. And please... Stay connected with the history enthusiasts. Participate in our other initiatives too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nidhi, for reading out the uh, 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 feedback. There's also another thing, a very interesting and uh, very important thing that Professor Rekha Pandey has uh, mentioned in the chat. Uh, Madam has written, I have a request that due to shortage of time, you had given only five to six minutes to all these participants. Please organize different lectures by these three prize winners and give them enough time that can be done at your convenience. Definitely, ma'am. Uh, all the five prize winners, in fact, and even the others, uh, because uh, we, we cannot give prize to everybody, but there are so many wonderful papers being presented in the entire webinar. Uh, we will definitely try to uh, invite them at different times throughout the year and listen to their full papers and uh, learn more from them. Uh, definitely we will uh, take this into account and uh, yes so it is now time to hear from our uh, editors and uh, I now request Dr. Chidanan Dhawleshwar sir to please uh, say a few words about the publication I request Nidhi uh, to please share the cover pages uh, if possible on the screen Yeah, thank you, uh, Manali. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very much thankful to you both for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, Nidhi came to me uh, saying that, sir, we are planning to webinar. Uh, I said, no, it is very difficult to organize the uh, webinars. The reason is that uh, it is very difficult to uh, have a good number of participants, uh, I said. She said, no, sir, we are not behind the numbers. We are just looking into the uh, quality uh, participants. Then uh, we chopped out the entire things and we took permission from uh, uh, Mughali, sir. Uh, sir said, yes, go ahead. And uh, of course, uh, today we are here uh, to the end of this uh, program. And uh, in this entire process, you know, we all know that uh, we, uh, we were had very good, uh, very quality papers and uh, uh, very standard uh, participants from across the uh, globe. And uh, we all know, uh, of course, as uh, Manali told, it is very difficult to give award to the uh, everyone because every the paper has that quality uh, to award, to give award. Uh, still, uh, we are trying, we work hard to find out some two, three uh, papers. Of course, all the papers are very good. And, uh, and for this, uh, the entire uh, program, successful program, I very much thankful to uh, Mughali sir and uh, both the Manali and uh, Nidhi 
thank you everyone uh, for you uh, know giving me this opportunity thank you thank you very much sir uh, it is it was an honor working with you as assistant editors for my me and nidhi and we have learned a lot from you throughout the process of this publication and uh, i'm sure there's a lot more to learn i now request uh, our uh, another editor uh, dr ramesh kamble sir to please uh, address the virtual gathering i think sir is not in the uh, in the session meeting nidhi you are on mute i'll just call sir of course till that uh, i'm sharing the front cover of the uh, our proceedings sure sir it's a raining outside sir is not there i think okay sir then let's uh, um, uh, move on i suppose uh once let's confirm i'll just call sir and confirm it once sure, just for uh, for a second मनाली इन द मेन पब्लिक प्लीज फॉर रीड द बेस्ट विशेष बाय फर्स्ट प्राइज विनर रितिका शी हैज रिटर्न द चेक बॉक्स यस सर रितिका sorry for the uh, uh, interruption kritika has written in the chat uh, congratulations and a big salute to all the participants and winners thank you to the entire uh, the history enthusiast team manali nidhi nandan sir for giving me this opportunity uh, uh, kritika it was actually an opportunity for us to learn from so many people uh, because uh, it's impossible to learn if we don't connect with others and uh, this was an opportunity that we got uh to learn from people not only from our own state and city but from so many different places and on so many different aspects of women's uh, story so i am actually thankful to you for presenting uh, presenting that wonderful paper thank you uh shams has written three cheers for the history enthusiasts uh more than that three cheers for humanity uh, women kind and for humanity of course congrats to the very efficient team for organizing such a wonderful event well done uh thank you so much uh nidhi you are on mute uh, yeah uh, sir is going to join in a second yes, sir ramesh sir will join sure. so ramesh kamle sir will join in a second yes let's hear from him uh, yeah okay unfortunately mughli sir will, could not uh, there is some network issue though he has joined the meeting uh, there is a problem with the uh, connection and he won't be able to speak okay ramesh sir is here okay uh yeah he's yeah. connecting his uh, i now request our uh, the editor of the uh, rewriting her story proceedings volume uh, dr ramesh kamle sir to kindly address the gathering Manali is the screen visible just check it no it's only no? a blank screen okay not, not visible yes yes sir manali Nam yes sir namaste sir namaste, namaste sir namaste. good evening to all good evening sir manali good screen is visible yes sir okay first of all first of all i congratulate manali mamai and uh, uh, nidhi katti and her team especially i 
good that her team it is wonderful uh, webinar international webinar conducted by manali mamai and anidhi kati uh, congratulate and it it is uh, one of the most uh, wonderful and miracle uh, webinar uh, and uh, more dedicated her uh, to nidhi ke nidhi katti and uh, monali mamai uh, 61 papers no it is right yes sir Mama? 62 sir 61 62 papers. Six, papers yes sir He, yes sir. more wonderful and uh, relevant to the today's society and uh, what you call it is most significant uh, uh, yeah, uh, research paper and then it is a very unique uh, webinar a 17 webinar right april 7 it is uh, uh, conducted a seven days webinar uh, um, i am telling that uh, so many uh, different uh, ideas collective collectivism uh, uh, international and national level uh, so many different states uh, paper collected it, it is wonderful uh, ideas and uh, focused very much interesting um i would like to say that uh, include another one important uh, task mamai and manali mamai and uh, uh, her team uh, dr ambedkar's perspective of uh, uh, women empowerment is include this paper it is most relevant uh, ideas of dr b r ambedkar and other contemporary social reformers are there so that you could include that uh, paper uh, i say that it is most important scope of uh, dr b r ambedkar and uh, narayan guru and then ev uh, ramaswami periyar and uh, uh, other mahakali ayan so many social reformer uh, also savitri bai phule is one of the most important uh, personality of the uh, historical personality uh, uh, the uh, modern teacher hmm? you know savitri bai phule huh? that's yes, sir. Uh, Let's include that paper. It is most unique and important uh, uh, this uh, what um, a book uh, and and uh, most uh, very unique to the society to other woman uh, society. Woman society is. most uh, uh, important in uh, uh, today's uh, women are equally in uh, india not only india but also world uh, uh, women is 50% because uh, women are very important role in a uh, society uplifting the society so that purpose uh, fulfill that purpose uh, therefore your webinar is very successful and wonderful uh, webinar uh, therefore uh, once once again uh, congratulate and uh, um, uh, manali mamai and uh, nidhi kati and her team rewriting the uh, history her uh, ambedkar's one quote is there yauri uh, men success behind women that's 
uh, what is most important role in society uh, family and the uh, nation building therefore women is very important role uh, thank you one and all uh, we the uh, joined all the uh, webinar uh, resource persons and other uh, one and all thank you monali mamaya and uh, anidhi kati thank you very much thank you very much sir for the uh, suggestions and for the words of uh, appreciation and uh, uh, guidance we will definitely have papers and uh, lectures on the role of dr ambedkar Uh, in emancipation of women in the modern times also as you mentioned the role of women in the constitution making and there are several other avenues of uh, uh, her story that have been left uh, in the seven days webinar we need a long much longer uh, webinar for that kind of a thing uh, so there are a lot lot of avenues that uh, have to be still covered and uh, uh, we will take that responsibility Uh, to the best of our abilities and we will fulfill it uh, that is our promise to you sir and uh, in the full length uh, paper volume we will surely look to add for such papers as you have uh, suggested us thank you sir thank you so much uh sir uh yes so now i uh, request miss manali momaya president of the history enthusiast uh, to do the presidential remark uh, and uh, of course the uh, honorary presidential remarks too and uh, of course the vote of thanks uh, so i re i request miss manali momaya to begin her presidential talk thank you so much nidhi and uh, this this feels a little bit uh, weird and also uh, frightening to me to take up such a big responsibility uh, it has never uh, come to me like this but i have to accept it and i have to fulfill it the president uh, the, this post as president uh, has always been something to work on uh, i am an executive president nandan shastri sir is the honorary president and uh, uh, he uh, kindly gave up the uh, responsibility of presidential remarks to me for the valedictory session uh, it is his idea and uh, vision that youngsters should get more chance and uh, uh, they have to learn to face such responsibilities and therefore um, i am uh, presenting my thoughts before you first of all i would like to read out a poem by keshwar nahid i have mentioned this this poem got mentioned a couple of times in the entire webinar and so i want to read it uh, read it out the grass is really like me the grass is also like me it has to unfurl underfoot to fulfill itself but what does its wetness manifest a scorching sense of shame or the heat of emotion the grass is also like me as soon as it can raise its head the lawn mower obsessed with flattening its into velvet mows it down again how you strive and endeavor to level women down too but neither the earth's nor women's desire to manifest life dies take my advice the idea of making a footpath was a good one those who cannot bear the scorching defeat of their courage are grafted on to the earth that's how they make way for the mighty but they are merely straw not grass the grass is really like me this poem uh, is by uh, keshwar nahid a very very famous feminist poet and it was translated from urdu into english by ruksana ahmed uh, my thanks to both the great ladies and yes that is the entire story of women throughout history whenever women have tried to break free from the uh, traditional roles from the stereotypical uh, gender roles that were assigned to them there have been criticisms there have been wars uh, women have been accused and uh, they have been uh, their name has been blackened uh, 
uh, women have been uh, subjected to all kinds of torture and discrimination uh, but there have been good things there have been also very uh, many instances where women have fought and they have come out of all these traditions uh, i don't say all traditions are bad there is good and bad to everything and of course every society on earth not just the indian society but every society on earth has a past where women has been subju uh, subjugated alienated and uh, uh, discriminated against and it has been a century old struggle uh, maybe much more than that but women ultimately today we have come to a stage a point in time where women have more freedom to express their thought uh, where they have more power to make decisions of their own they have more uh, choice uh, about their own bodies what they want to do with their own lives for their own careers and uh, for their partners in uh, life so uh, there is change and there is positive change there are also some negative changes uh, which have also been highlighted throughout this webinar and uh, still there are a lot of avenues a lot of themes a lot of sub themes a lot of hot topics that had to be left out because of the shortage of time but in the coming days uh, there will be more discussions this is just the beginning this is just a uh, a small a very very tiny effort when compared to the ocean of topics that are out there that needs to uh, th that needs still to be uh, pondered upon to be discussed to be brought to light uh, and uh, uh, so somewhere we have to come to a decision uh, somewhere we have to uh, come to an understanding of what the her story is uh, how it has uh, evolved over the period of time and uh, how it is going to evolve in the future because that power it lies in our hands uh, what we do today will decide our fate tomorrow and uh, therefore it is time uh, it has always been but it is time now more than before to act responsibly uh, to be aware of what we are doing and how it affects the entirety of womanhood womankind uh, because there are also cases where uh, mistake of one person is uh, uh, it it uh, it is taken as an example to uh, depict an entire community that kind of thing has happened and it keeps happening especially in the case of women because uh, that is how we are we are still considered as a weaker sex in many places uh, in many instances uh, women are still considered uh, as abla naris somebody who cannot do things on their own who cannot lift heavy weights who cannot drive who cannot um, fend for themselves who cannot protect themselves and so on the list of stereotypes is endless and one by one we have to break those there were so many interesting things that were uh, decided upon that were resolved throughout this webinar especially uh, for me uh, at least uh, at the personal level uh, there was a lecture by uh, dr uh, uh, pooja halyal in that we had resolved that we should change the language there should be a feminist language the language that we use now the proverbs especially that we use now are very very stereotypical and sexist many of them not all of them of course but such proverbs they should stop being in existence there should be new proverbs which are created by women that are uh, that promote equity and not just the uh, story of one gender or the whims and fancies of one gender there were so many other um, lectures in which we came upon different decisions like this um, the decision to uh, have a new perspective on each and every discipline uh, of uh, academic world that was also one of the results that we have taken in this webinar because every body of knowledge that exists to some extent is driven by the male perspective and that has to stop every perspective every perspective counts every narrative counts and every gender every race every caste every community everybody counts 
and therefore we should create a stream of history that is all inclusive uh, that is uh, it is our mission as i and nandan sir were discussing yesterday the mission of the history enthusiasts is to inspire new ways of thinking by connecting diverse communities to historical perspectives through various virtual and on site events and uh, it is our vision to highlight the fundamental aspects of history of all marginalized people and in the long term create an all inclusive stream of historical narratives where no community or group remains neglected so uh yes the story of women is one of those marginalized stories that needs to come out that has been waiting for centuries to come out and uh, i am not saying that we have done a very great job uh, this was something due for a long long time and our effort is just a very little one a very tiny one uh, there is it could have been done better yes it could have been done on a bigger scale also yes uh, was it possible by us i don't know about that uh, what we did i think that was to the best of our capabilities we have tried to give our more than our 100% and in that process we have made mistakes we have had technical glitches uh, we have had some miscommunications here and there and we have had some hurdles here and there that we had to overcome but uh, i think at the end what matters is that we completed it successfully and that we have had some positive impact and for that i am very thankful to all the participants and uh, for any mistakes any miscommunications that happened from our side from the team of the history enthusiast i take full responsibility for that as the president and i ask for your apology uh, for your uh, forgiveness uh, i apologize from the bottom of my heart uh, it is also a very great responsibility to propose a vote of thanks at the end of some webinar like this and uh, i just want to do that now in our three years of journey many elders and scholars have stood as pillars of support to our humble association it has indeed been a beautiful journey so far and it feels like a dream to be celebrating the third anniversary or to have celebrated the third anniversary in keeping with the tradition of the past 2 years we decided to celebrate the third anniversary of the history enthusiasts with itihasa saptaha because that is what we had done for the first and the second year also the account of how a week long lecture series turned into an inter uh, international webinar not just a state level or a national level one but an international level webinar uh is a miracle it is something that i still don't comprehend the small celebration of anniversary turned into a big celebration of woman kind like the saying in hindi log judte gaye karwa banta gaya people began joining us from various parts of the country and from a few neighboring nations as well we received over 3 scores of papers and abstracts for publication the response to this little drive of ours was overwhelming to say the least because we had not expected that it will reach so far and wide uh, although this is not so far and wide when compared to the uh, uh, some more successful uh, associations and webinars uh, but for us this is a very big deal because this is our own uh, this is only our third year and uh, being as inexperienced as we are um, it, it matters a lot to us that so many people came out and supported us I want to acknowledge the contribution of our honorary president Shri Nandan Shastri and advisory council member Professor Rekha Pandey, who roped in several uh, senior speakers from across the country and the globe to become part of the Saptaha. Our vice president Ms. Nidhi Katti was also responsible for bringing in several other speakers. So I thank Nidhi for that. I thank the members of our advisory council, Professor Ravi Kori Shetter. Dr T S Ravi Shankar sir Dr H M Siddhan Gowder sir Professor Shiladhar Mogli sir Professor M V Usha Devi ma'am Dr Vinay Kumar sir Dr Amita Gupta Dr Sharmishta Chatterjee Dr Chidanand Dhavaleshwar and Dr Sheetal Rana who guided corrected and encouraged us throughout the preparations of the webinar and joined us in various capacities as speakers chairpersons of paper presentation sessions and as delegates 
In addition to this, Professor Shiladhar Mughali, Dr. Chidanand Dhavleshwar and Dr. Ramesh Kamle took on the additional responsibility of editing the proceedings volume along with myself and Nidhi. I thank them also. Similarly, all our executive members did their part in chalking out the details of the webinar. I am especially thankful to Dr. Madhuri Chaugule, uh, Secretary of the History Enthusiast, Dr. Jagdish Asode, Joint Secretary, Mrs. Chaya Momaya, Treasurer, Dr. Aditya Hegde and Dr. Uh, and Ms. Bhargavi Katti, both executive members of the History Enthusiast, for their valuable inputs and participation uh, in various key decisions of the entire webinar. My thanks also to Executive Committee members Dr. Sridhar Kamble and Ms. Shankarama Ilge for their presence. The webinar gave us confidence to take on bigger responsibilities in the future and for that I express my gratitude to the various speakers and participants who gave us an opportunity to host and learn from them. Without their response and participation, this webinar would never materialize. Their support and feedback have been the driving force of this webinar. My personal thanks to each resource person. I'm not taking everybody's names because that will become a very, very long and uh, tedious uh, uh, list. So I personally thank each one, each and every resource person from the bottom of my heart uh, who addressed the virtual gathering and uh, contributed to the body of knowledge that exists on the story of women. My thanks also once again to Nandan Shastri sir for sponsoring the cash prizes for best papers presented by young researchers in the webinar and to Mrs. Chaya Momaya for sponsoring the cost of certificate printing and postage. This webinar also gave me and Nidhi the chance to explore our artistic abilities. I grabbed the opportunity of designing the uh, both the front and uh, back cover pages of the volume uh, including the illustration on the front cover page. Nidhi did the illustration on the back cover page. And uh, uh, we also got a lot of appreciation from the uh, core committee members. So we are thankful for that. Uh, I also uh, got to improve my own digital aptitude, di uh, digital designing aptitude by creating all those uh, flyers and brochures and everything. And my attention to detail has also improved because of that. So again, I'm thankful to my team members for giving me that opportunity. Lastly, I must acknowledge the service and support of Ideal International e-Publication for helping us bring our proceedings volume out in time uh, despite several inevitable delays on our end. Uh, the proceedings volume would not be possible without them. And if I have forgotten to acknowledge anybody who has directly or indirectly been responsible for the success of this webinar, I apologize and seek forgiveness for the natural human limitation of my memory. In a sentence, my thanks to one and all who worked towards the success of this webinar and uh, for giving us this opportunity to learn, to grow and uh, to, to get a step closer towards perfection. Hoping for the continued participation and support of all the history enthusiasts. Uh, I end my vote of thanks here and uh, uh, once again, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Manali, I, you have fulfilled my expectation and uh, just as a concluding sentence, I would like to quote from a book, uh, a well-known book, The Feminine Mystery by Byron, which is very popular throughout the world. Uh, the author uh, in 10 chapters argues that letting women develop into complete people who participate in all facets of society will ultimately improve everyone's quality of life, not only just women's, but also men's life as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this quote. And uh, before we end this webinar officially, uh, I have a request to make from all the participants. I will be sharing the feedback form in the webinar group. I request all the participants to kindly fill the, uh, kindly submit your valuable feedback through the form, and also we will sh uh, we will uh, send the certificates to each and every participant uh, based on their presentation and the title, paper titles. Uh, but we request you to bear with us for uh, two days. 
as uh, it will take time we are person we are not sending the certificates through a uh, google form link uh, i am per uh, personally typing out each certificate and sending it to you so kindly bear with us for two days we will send them according to the registration list from first to last uh, kindly submit your feedback without fail thank you all once again we are uh, we have come to the official end of this seven day international webinar on rewriting her story it has been a wonderful journey thank you all Manali, I need to just uh, notify something. I request all the participants not to share the feedback link with anyone else who have not registered. Please keep it with yourself and uh, fill the feedback. Don't share it outside the group and don't exit from the group because uh, uh, still we have to publish the full papers. We request all the participants to submit their full papers as soon as possible and stay in the WhatsApp group. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Yes, the full length papers will be published in ISSN. So uh, uh, kindly help us by sending your papers at the earliest possible. Thank you all very much. I am ending the meeting here. Uh, hope to see you all soon sometime again in some other endeavor. Uh, and my special thanks to our valedictory speaker, uh, Shri, uh, Professor uh, Hemant Dave sir, for spending his valuable time with us. In this valedictory session, uh, even though it was it a was last, a pleasure. Yes, sir. It was a last-minute uh, invitation, but sir has uh, uh, fulfilled the responsibility of a valedictory speaker beyond our expectations and very, very uh, wonderful impact on the audience. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped. Three minutes over.